Welcome to another Tomb Boom Studio tutorial from Tutcast.com. I'm Daniel Allen from YouTube.com forward slash Dan on a Bouncy Castle. Okay, so today we're going to be creating some simple fire in Tomb Boom Studio. So, when we load up Tomb Boom, we're going to get this welcome dialog box. What we're going to do, we're going to name our project, we're going to call it Fire. We're going to set it to web animation large and give it about 20 frames per second that's that's it's quite a lot for a web file but you can change it to whatever type of format you're doing and we're gonna press create now if you've never used Toon Boom before it's not very hard to pick up and I'm sure in fact you can actually follow along this tutorial in flash if you've got flash they're very similar um, so the first thing we're going to do is rename our drawing, right click, rename element, and call it fire. So we're going to grab our brush tool, make sure the brush tool is selected. You may see one of these, but just make sure you select brush. You hold down on the arrow to get this little menu. So with the brush tool selected, we're going to come down to our brush settings. Now the minimum size is how thin the brush is going to be at its smallest point and the maximum size is how big it's going to be at its maximum size. And the smoothness is in control of how smooth your line is. Now what I mean by that is if we set the smoothness to zero and we draw a little zigzag like that it's going to stay zigzaggy. Whereas if we put the smoothness up to 10 and we draw a little zigzag it's going to turn it into a straight line. Now we want to set our smoothness to about about three. Now grab our brush tool again. You can press the at symbol, I believe, to get to that. And we're going to draw some fire. So you can take as much time in this as drawing a piece of fire as you want. That's very bad, but you get the idea. Then we're going to come to a new frame and the way we're going to do this is we're going to use a technique called onion skinning. Now the way that works is it's going to show you roughly what the previous frame looked like. So this being indented, this button here being indented means that onion skinning is turned on. However our settings for onion skinning are not how we want it. If we hold our left mouse button over this one here and press previous drawing, as you can see, we can now see what our previous drawing looked like. And roughly following it, but changing it slightly to add the element of movement, we can now draw our next bit of fire. Now, you spend as much time on this as you want. I'm just going to do it quickly for the sake of the tutorial, and so not to waste as much of your time as possible. Now if you don't have Toon Boom make sure you check out the website just google it or something like that. It's very good, it's not very expensive which is good, I mean you can buy the big whopping package but you don't actually need it and for those that find Fl Adobe Flash a bit daunting then this is definitely a good place to start. I will look into integrating Toon Boom and Flash in the future so make sure you keep an eye on these tutorials. Um, now we've drawn the outline of our fire, the next thing we want to do is set it up into a cycle. So we're going to grab this last frame and highlight all of them. Then we're going to right click on these and press create cycle and we want our sequence to be about 80 frames long. Now 80, we've drawn about 5 frames, 5 into 80 is 16. I don't know that, but what I did earlier is I went into calculator and I did 80 divided by 5, which gives us 16. So we're going to set it to 16. This is very approximate. In fact, we're going to set it to 17. For the sake of giving ourselves extra frames, which we should get in the habit of doing, because it gives you more room to work. As you can see now, we've now got well, a very weird looking, depending on how much time you spent, but moving looking fire. But 
It doesn't look very far. No, I swear there's something missing. <laughs> yeah. It's missing some colour. What we're going to do, come into our colour menu over here. And here are loads of preset colours, and they're all really good, but it's not what we want. So we're going to create, we click on this drop down arrow box, press new palette. And this is going to give us a new set of colours that we can create ourselves. You can edit the default ones. However, I wouldn't do that because they're very good and there might be a time when you want to use one. Then you've accidentally edited it. So, in our new palette, we're going to call this Fire. And this colour is going to be made up of a gradient. Now, if you don't know what a gradient is, it's basically... The way to look at it is the word gradual. It's going to gradually change from one colour to another. So, we're going to set it to gradient. Grab the first colour tick the S box this is gonna make it a lot easier to display the colors as you can see set this bar to about here which is high saturation which is good now we want to select a yellow color for the first bit see that color picker I'd select that one there then click about here this adds a new color to our gradient and we're gonna make this orangey click here with the color picker thing and then about here, add a new colour, this is going to be red. That looks like a nice red. And then our last colour, we actually want it to be red, so grab our colour picker. If we, if we colour pick that red colour, it's now the same colour as that red. But we want to decrease the alpha channel on it, basically make it more transparent. So it's going to gradually turn off. Move our red to the end like here like that so it's not too transparent. Now we can close that down. As you can see it's changed there. That wasn't what we wanted to do so you know what? Delete that. We're gonna make sure we've got the black selected. Uh, if you come over to here you can see our onion skinning. If we press next drawing we can see what our next drawing is going to be, so if we just loosely base it on that there you go, you've got a fire again and because of the way the cycle works this frame is going to be exactly the same as this frame because it's basically copying this frame there to there to there to there and onwards now that's really good because if you were to edit this one, it's going to instantly be updated to the to the um to its fellow copies. We can turn off onion skinning now because now that we've drawn our cycle out, we don't need it. Grab the fill bucket tool. Come into our new palette. Grab our gradient. Now, the most annoying thing about Toon Boom is that unfortunately the gradient only seems to work in this linear fashion. And by that I mean it goes from left to right. So the best way to counteract this is to grab our object and rotate it around. And do that for all of them using the select tool. Just highlight it all and rotate it around. The reason we're highlighting is because in case it's made up of different strokes, then you've definitely got your whole object. 